Hello everyone and welcome to your research methods one, understanding non-parametric tests of difference. So this is going to be an online seminar and it's designed so that you can come back to it when you're doing your summative uh, portfolio. Then you can come back to it, look through this video, look through the online resources um, and it should help you with completing that assessment. As I said, the outcomes, um, the intended learning outcomes from today are to look at the differences between a Mann Whitney U and a Wilcox and signed rank test, so those are non parametric tests of difference, um, and to identify uh, and to understand when you would use them um, and how you would use them. So we'll also be going through how you would conduct them, um, so and signposting back to your walkthrough that you have um, that takes you through all of these steps as well with some uh, further information, examples of reporting. So you've always got that to retur return to. Um, when you're doing your assessment. Um, and we'll look at how you can draw conclusions from a, a man Whitney U and a Wilcox and signed rank test um, from the results uh, and sort of how to report those as well. So as I said, um, there isn't a, a, a version of the man Whitney U or the Wilcox and signed rank test in your practice portfolio, but these activities is, have been written in the same format as that practice portfolio because they will be on your summative assessment. So there will be a question which uses a non-parametric um, test of difference. So uh, on that, that summative, that graded assessment. So please make sure that you are comfortable with running these and interpreting them. If you do have any questions, then um, feel free to book a tutorial with a member of the module team. Um, we'll also be having a practice portfolio uh, cafes, research sort of like support cafes then um, later in the module and um, don't forget to come to that practice portfolio feedback session uh, and bring any questions you have as well to that. So first of all we're going to look at uh, a short video on how to um, manipulate the, the data so uh, you'll have the data set um, and how the output was produced so we'll go through that. Um, then I'd like you to pause the um, the video, have a go at the actual seminar activity questions, uh, and then make sure that you list down any questions you have for your next face-to-face -face seminar. If you want to bring along your completed activity sheets and ask for feedback on it, then staff will be very happy to help you with that. Uh, so we'll look at kind of some of the ways that you might be reporting your results and thinking about that uh, a bit later after completing the seminar activity, so you can restart this video. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at the Man Whitney U uh, test first, uh, and I'll show you how to manipulate the data. Okay, so we have our data set open. Um, so uh, we've got a column called ID, a column called group, and you can see that there are two levels to that. So the variable is group. We have a control group and a treatment group, and we have a score here called depression score. So before we can really go any further, we need to know what all this information means. So we need to look at the activity worksheet. So this is the Man Whitney U test practice worksheet. So you can see you've got question um, three here. Report the results of the Man Whitney U test, examining whether there was a significant difference or not between the conditions or groups in the experiment. Make sure that you adhere to APA format. And then next question, what conclusions can you draw based on the results of the study? Refer to the hypothesis in your answer. Okay, and You can see the number of points allocated to both those questions. So the study information, um, you've got uh, a study that's looking at social media addiction. Um, and that's where individuals are unable to control their social media usage. Um, and to such an extent that it interferes with their other life tasks. So it's kind of getting in the way of their, their everyday um, life activities. So research that is available suggests that it can be harmful. It can um, Social media addiction is linked to a range of negative mental health consequences. So this fictional study has been designed to explore those, in more, those issues in more detail. Uh, and we're looking at a group of individuals who've been categorized as um, meeting the criteria for social media addiction. Uh, and um, we're looking at a, a control group that haven't met the threshold um, for social media addiction, but they do use social media. Um, and we're comparing them on depressive symptoms. 
um, so measured using the depression, anxiety and stress scale um, 21 version of the, of the DAS 21 questionnaire. We can see that all the participants, um, we try to keep them as similar across the two groups apart from um, whether or not they have social media addiction. So they are all un UK undergraduate students aged between 18 to 24 years old. What we're also going to identify, we'll have a look at how to do this now, is that the data is not normally distributed. Um, and so actually running a parametric test, which would have been the independent samples t-test, wouldn't be appropriate. So we need to do something else. So we're going to be running a non-parametric test of difference, which is the man whitney u Okay, so we're back at our data. So the first thing we need to do, um, if this was your data, would be to look at how it's behaving. So we would go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. And we know that our, de our dependent variable is the DAS21 Depression Scale Score. So we want to put that in our dependent list. But we want to look at how that data behaves for both groups. So we need to separate them out, um, this these scores by the group. And we transfer that to the factor list. This is all in your uh, walkthrough. So if I show you that now, there's a link on Blackboard. Click launch course, launch again, and your non-parametric test of difference walkthrough will, will start. Um, so you've got a knowledge check quiz at the beginning just to see if there are any areas you need to brush up on. Then you've got your conducting the man Whitney U test, and then you've also got conducting a Wilcox and signed rank test. So all the steps that I'm looking at in this are covered in this walkthrough, so you, you've got that as an additional resource. Okay, so back to the data. So we've told SPSS that we want to look at DAS uh, depression scale scores separately for group. We we'll just check uh, in the, the plots option, we want our histograms and we want normality plots of tests. Click continue, and I click OK. So our output file um, has, has opened. We can see that we have we don't have equal numbers in our groups. Now, actually, using a non-parametric test is quite good in this respect because it can it can deal with unequal groups better than some of the parametric tests can. We have our descriptive statistics, and later on we're going to be returning and using the median in particular. Because in cases where you're using non-parametric tests of difference, the median is usually the best um, measure of central tendency to report, rather than a mean, which might not give you a... If your data isn't normally distributed, the mean can sometimes give you a, a skewed idea of the, of the measure of central tendency. So we can see we've got a larger sample size. Um, so we could use either the, the KS, the Komogorov Smirnov, or the shapiro wilk test. Um, both of them are saying that there is a statistically significant difference between our distribution and a normal distribution. But we need to be careful with this because it could be because we have a, s we have a reasonable size sample for both, um, both of the control and the treatment groups. So they could just be a little bit sensitive. Um, and actually one of the best ways to, to check this is to look at your histograms. And actually, when you're looking at the histogram, you can see that there is quite a, a clear skew to this. And because the the tail is to the, the right, um, that would be positive skew. And it's actually also quite a flat distribution. So in combination, um, the skew and ketosis means that that does not look normally distributed. And actually, the opposite picture is true for um, the people in the treatment group. So this is the information for the control group. This is the information for the treatment group. And this does not look normally distributed. So what we're going to do now then is run the non-parametric test of difference. So if we go to Analyze, this time we'll go down to non-parametric tests. Now there are two different ways of running the test. They'll achieve the same thing. Um, the one that's shown in your walkthrough uh, is this one. So you go to Legacy Dialogues, and then we choose two independent samples. Uh, it'll bring up this box. It looks a bit almost like a, a t-test, but um, it's non-parametric version. So we need to transfer our grouping variable, tell SPSS which two uh, groups we want to compare. So we have to choose group, 
move it over and now it's asking us to define the groups so we have to remember how we coded the data which was 0 and 1 and click continue and then we need to tell SPSS what we want to compare those groups on so that's the depression scale score uh, and actually as the, the test type the default that has been chosen is the man with you so that's the one that we need and we can click OK and here we have the output for the non-parametric test, the man with U test we can see the number of cases in each group and check that that's what we were expecting we can see the mean rank of a, um, which is one of the things that the man with need test uses to calculate a significant difference and then the actual significant difference whether we have one or not is displayed in the test statistics box we can see the top row says Man Whitney U, that's the Man Whitney U test statistic which has been used to calculate um, statistical significance. And when you're reporting that, you would report the Man Whitney U test statistic, the Z statistic here, and um, also your significance. So we'll be looking at this value, and if that value in this row is less than 0 0.05, then we would say that that is statistically significant. So I'm going to pause the video here. What I'd like you to do is go back to this activity sheet and now have a go at answering these two questions. Okay everyone, so hopefully you've um, had a look through the output um, and you've also had a look at back at your practice activity worksheet. Um, so we'll have a look at now how you can actually report it so it's really important that you have a go at that before looking at the rest of the video because um, there's nothing quite like um, trying to, to figure something out yourself to you get to to know what you need to know um, and what bits you're more confident with and which bits you might need to brush up on so what i've done is i've got my walkthrough open um, on the one half of the screen and then i've got my practice activity worksheet on the other half. What I'm going to do is look at the relevant section from the Man with the U test. I'm going to go to watch the guide and I'm going to look at reporting the Man with the U test. So in here there's a template that you can use to help you answer a question like this and then this question is really asking well what can we say? What does this mean? So these are the results with sort of describing the findings of the study. This is putting that back into the context of what it all means. So if you go back to the walkthrough, it gives you an idea of we're saying which type of test we've we've um, conducted and why. Also, you're saying how many participants were involved. Now this is the actual format then of the the results itself. So we have the U, that's the Man Whitney U test statistic, the value of the test statistics. Um, that's the Z, the score um, for Z, and then we have our P value. Now this is obviously the example used in the uh, walkthrough, which is looking at drinking alcohol, uh, not drinking alcohol. Um, what we need to do is look at our output. and look at the numbers, where they've come from. Okay, so we've got um, uh, the U statistic is this one here. Um, the Z statistic is this one here. And the P value is this one here, that's in the significance column. Okay, so let's have a go at writing that up then. Okay, so looking back at our um, worksheet. We need to say something about what we're doing and why, so it would be making a statement here about um, that we'd run a Man Whitney U. And then something around a statement of um, the intention of that.
Um, obviously, I'm just doing this in note form at the minute, um, so I, I'll write down my notes and then I'll I'll kind of tidy it all up and make sure it's in, in full sentences later on. Um, I'm, I'm writing in note form because I don't want to try and constrain you. There are different ways you could do this, um, so you need to put it into your own words, really, to, ha to have a go at it. But we need to say something about that we uh, a man with new test had been performed and something around um, in order to compare a group um, of individuals with social media addiction to a control group on depressive symptoms. We'd also potentially want to say... Um, uh, the number of participants in those groups that would that would be helpful um, so we know if we look back at our data we know that we have in the social media addiction group we have 192 individuals and in the control group we can see that we have 108. Okay. So the next piece of information we need um, that I would write down a note form um, if we look back at the walkthrough um, is to actually get the statistics following this, this approach. We need a capital U in italics, an equal sign, and we'll need to look at our output to find the value for U. We need a capital Z in italics again, and another equal sign, and we'll need to find the value of Z in our output. And then P, that is lowercase, it needs to be in italics. Now we have to at this point decide whether we're going to be doing using uh, a less than symbol or equal symbol. Um, we won't know which one's appropriate until we look at our output. Okay, so looking at the output, we can see the value of u is 15.50. We can see the value of z is minus. 14.4 because we've had to round that up and we can see the p-value there is less than 0 0.05 so um, and it's actually a lot less so we can't put p equals 0 because that's just not true we haven't we simply haven't reported it to enough decimal places we have to put p as less than 0.5 Zero zero one. Okay, so that's our statistical test, the format for reporting it. So now we need to decide what that means. So we've said that that value is less than 0 0.05, so that's a significant result. Okay, so to know what that means though, okay, well, how did it, what's the actual difference? What I would do is to scroll back up to where our descriptive statistics are reported in full here. And because it's a non-parametric test of difference, we want to look at the median. So we can see the control group um, and to report median you need capital M, lowercase dn, and that needs to be in italics, and then equals so the control group, the median for that is 13. And we can see that the treatment group, or our social media addiction group, the median is, oh, sorry, the equal sign should not be in italics, is 25.5. So we can see the, the difference in the medians. So now we can tell, okay, there is a statistically significant difference between the groups and it's in the direction that individuals in the social media addiction have higher scores on the depression subscale of the DAS21 than do people in the control group who use social media but do not have 
um, social media addiction. So we get we're getting a sense of what's going on if we in the data. If we now look back at that walkthrough, what you would need to do is to put this into full sentences, structure it, make sure it, it, it's clear what um, what you did uh, and, and reporting what you found, statistically significant result or not. Uh, in the next question, this is what we're, we're looking at and saying, okay, putting this back into the context, what does it mean? Well, it provides support for our hypothesis. Now I've, I've just realized I forgot to, to mention if we have a directional hypothesis, you can um, say about a one-tailed hypothesis. I, by default, have done a two-tailed test. You could do a one-tailed test as well. Uh, if you do the one-tailed test, then you would need to signify that you've done that by putting this in the brackets alongside it. Okay. So what we can say is that it has provided support for the, the hypothesis. So the, the researcher was expecting to see um, higher levels of depressive symptoms in social media addiction group. Um, so it has provided support for that. Um, but what we can't say is um, there may be an issue in that we don't know perhaps other factors that could be affecting this result, depressive symptoms. Um, so we have to be very tentative in saying and making anything, any statements that are causal. Um, so we can't really say at this point that social media addiction causes higher levels of, of um, uh, depressive symptoms. We can say that there's evidence to support that hypothesis, but we can't really say conclusively that there's been a, a causal relationship between social media addiction and depression. But this is where you're kind of talking about that in this in this um, question. So you need to reflect on what your hypothesis was. Did you find support for it? What might it be? Are there any um, caveats? So kind of disclaimers. Um, from your findings, as we've just talked about, uh, and this is where you would describe that. What we're going to do now is look at a Wilcox unsigned rank test. So this is this is the data set that's on Blackboard, um, and it's uh, the Wilcox unsigned rank test um, data. What we can see here is that we have a column again for ID for each individual, um, but this time we've got a pre-depression score and a post-depression score. Um, and so this is the pre-depression score for individual um, ID number one, uh, and this is the post-depression score. So they've got we've got two scores for each person here. So to know what that means, um, we need to look back at the activity worksheet. So this is the worksheet available on Blackboard as well. So we can see it's in the same sort of format as the as the activity we've just completed, uh, but in in this case it's saying report the results of the Wilcox and side rank test examining whether there was a significant difference or not between the conditions or groups in the experiment. And then again, what conclusions could you draw based on the results of this study? Um, what we have, we can see, is that we've got 50 UK university undergraduate students in this sample. Um, uh, and all of those individuals have met um, the criteria for social media addiction. Um, uh, but the design of this is that we, we've recruited participants to take take part in an intervention study. So the intervention is um, going to be six sessions of cognitive behavioral therapy to work um, in relation to the um, their, their well-being um, around social media addiction. And what we're looking at is before the intervention, we'll take a measure of their depressive symptoms using the depression, anxiety and stress scale. Uh, so the depression subscale of that. Um, and then we'll use the same uh, measure after the six sessions of CBT have been completed um, to see if there has been a reduction in participants' depressive symptoms. So we're expecting the, uh, a direction with this, um, and um, it's a repeated measures design, but when we've actually, when we look at the data, we'll, we'll test the assumptions in a moment, you see that the um, the data is not normally distributed. Uh, so there's a there's an issue with the data, which means that we can't use a parametric test, which we may have chosen a paired samples t-test if, if the data was normally distributed. Um, so instead, we're going to have to use a non-parametric test of difference, which is the Wilcox and signed rank test. Um, now, when we look at the uh, normality of the data, it's a bit different from looking at a between groups design what we actually have to do is calculate a different score 
between depressive symptoms at time point one and time point two and look at how that different score variable is distributed instead. I'll take you through how to do that. Essentially, it's the same process as if we were running a paired samples t-test. So if you want to check the distribution of the data, you can look back at the, at the parametric tests of difference walkthrough and the assumption checking used for paired samples t-tests. Um, and that's, that's the approach I'm going to be taking here. So if we have the data, so if you have the data open here, um, we need to go to uh, transform. We need to compute a new variable, which is the different score. Um, and we want to see if at time point two, post intervention, uh, scores are how they've changed from pre. So we're going to have the difference between post depression um, scores and pre depression scores. And then if we click OK, uh, we'll have an output file here. Uh, this keeps a log of everything we've told SPSS to do. If we look at our data set, we've now got a new column. And we can see actually there's a difference. Um, in t we can see, because we know it's uh, post-depression scores minus pre-depression scores, that there's been uh, a reduction in the number of um, points on the depression scale. So that's what the negative sign means um, between post and pre. Okay. So what we need to do now is see how this data is distributed. So we go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics and Explore. And we need to make sure we transfer over the different score. So it's, it's we need the, the different score to be normally distributed rather than looking at our raw pre and post intervention depression scores. So you must make sure to, to select the right one out. So we want the different score, transfer that over, we look in plots, we want histogram, and we want normality plots with tests. We click continue. So what we have here is your output file. It's on the different score. We can see that we have um, uh, a sample size of 50. We're not too interested in these descriptive statistics, um, but we can see that the mean difference score is, is 13.5. Uh, and we can see that the skew and kurtosis values, they're both positive. Um, and this one is outside of the, uh, just outside the plus one, minus one bounds. Um, because we've got a relatively small sample, uh, we're just on the sort of the edge, really. Um, I would use the Shapiro-Wilk test. It's better with smaller samples. And we can see that we have a statistically significant result. So our distribution on the different score variable is significantly different from normal. We can see actually how the skew and kurtosis values come together to, to create this quite um, skewed, strange kind of looking distribution. It's kind of quite pointy here and then a, a, a large decrease um, towards the tails. Uh, so this really doesn't look normally distributed and, and it is safer to run a non-parametric test of difference on the data. So next we'll do that. We'll go to Analyze. We'll go to the non-parametric tests and we'll go to legacy dialogues. Uh, and this time we'll choose two related samples. So that's because each participant took part in both the pre and post measure of depression. And it's asking us to pair up the, the variables, which is the pre and the post scores. We can see that the default is the Will Coxon, which is what we want. So we'll click OK. And the output that's produced is this. So we can see it's a non-parametric test. It's the Wilcox and signed rank test specifically. We can see here that we have negative and positive ranks and ties. And actually, all of the ranks are negative. So that suggests that there's been um, a decrease for every single individual. Uh, for all 50 participants, there appears to have been a decrease in score from pre to post. Um, but that in itself isn't, isn't too useful. What we want to look at here is the test statistic. So we have the Z score um, and we have the statistical significance result here. Uh, if that value is less than 0 0.05, we know we have a statistically significant result. Um, and then to look at uh, what that statistically significant result means, we, we know that it looks like there's going to be a decrease based on the number of negative ranks. But what we need to look at are our mediums. So we haven't actually asked SPSS to produce those yet. So we'll go to Analyze, 
we'll go to descriptive statistics and explore and this time instead of looking at the um, different score we'll look at the raw pre and post scores we click OK and what we have here is a median pre-score of 26 and a median post score of 11.5. So we can see the change between time point one and time point two. So if we go back to the worksheet, see the output is the same as here. This is the information that you would be presented with in say, uh, or something similar in your summative assessment. So let's look at how we report that. So the best thing to do is to look at the, um, the sign rank test guide in the walkthrough. Um, we'll go to reporting. Okay. So before you go any further, have a look at that practice activity worksheet now and try and answer those two questions. So the first one's very much about describing your results. The second question's trying to put it back into the context. What does it all mean? So pause this video, have a look at that now, um, and uh, and then once you've had a go, you've used your walkthrough to help you structure um, your your kind of reporting of the statistics. Then start this video again, and um, we'll we'll take another look at it. Okay, so now I've got my uh, walkthrough open on the reporting page. Um, for Wilcox and signed rank. So we can tell uh, the first kind of part of uh, answering this question is, is going to be a, about saying what we did, what type of tests we did, and, and roughly why. We'll also need to say something about the number of participants in, in, in the sample. And then the reporting of the statistics will look something like this. Okay, so we need to report the z-score. And if we look at the output, we can see the z-score is this, and we need to report a p-value, which is this. Now, because that value says 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, what we can't do is say p equals 0, 0, 0, because we just haven't reported it to enough decimal places. So instead, we'll have to say p is less than 0, 0, 0, 0.001. Okay, so let's have a go at doing that. So one of the things we need to say, s first of all, is something around what we're looking at. So, um, something around, you might want to be specific with this because um, we, we did expect a reduction. So, exploring the impact of perhaps the six sessions of CBT on the reduction of depressive symptoms for a group of participants with social media addiction. And in here we can say, the number of participants in the group, which was 50. Now, because that's the whole group, they took part in both pre and post, then we use the capital N. Um, now, what I tend to do is write note format and then afterwards I'll write it out in full sentences. So this is really um, just note form. Um, and another reason that I've written it um, a bit in, in note form or what I'm doing in note form is so that you don't feel constrained in writing it in one way. There are different ways of kind of um, talking about this so you need to find one uh, that you can put into your own words. So next we'll get the template for the Wilcoxon. So you'd also need to say something about that it was a Wilcoxon signed rank test. So I'm, this is all information that I need to include. So then the template, so I need a Z in italics and then an equal sign and then I'll need the value of Z from our output. Um, I need to report a lowercase p and we know from looking at it that we're going to have to use the less than symbol. If we look at our output we can plug the numbers in so we can see Z there is uh, a minus sign and that is 6.17, so round it up. And we can see that P is less than 0 0.01. Um, now we'd also need something about pre-intervention depression score. And because this is a non-parametric test of difference, we need to report the median, which is a capital M 
uh, lowercase dn in italics. Uh, and the median for pre score, if we look back at our descriptive statistics, um, oh, sorry, the descriptive statistics for the raw data, we can see it's a median of 26 to start. And the post intervention depression score. is has a median of 11.50. So you need to put your um, this information into this kind of template uh, so it's in full sentences. Uh, the next question is thinking about okay well what was our hypothesis? Did we find support for it? Well we, we know that our hypothesis was that there would be a reduction um, in uh, depressive symptoms for the social media addiction group before and after the intervention and that actually our findings have supported that. So we have found support for that hypothesis. Uh, you could also think about, okay, what does that mean in the context? Perhaps how could this information be used? So it would suggest that CBT could be um, provide useful uh, intervention for this particular population to um, reduce de depressive symptoms. Um, but also whether there are any caveats or limitations to our conclusions and that's where you could um, talk about your take on that in this question in response to this question so that was your online seminar um, please do have a go if you have any questions then um, please feel free to get in touch with the uh, research methods one module team um, in terms of signposting uh, don't forget to look back at your lecture for the non-parametric tests of difference. Uh, make sure you've got your walkthrough open as you're trying to complete your tasks. Um, remember to check the core tasks document. It has some um, information about uh, different activities you, you can be doing. Also, your reading list is a good place to, to look for some um, further reading on non-parametric tests. Um, but I'd also recommend these pages by Andy Fields. He has... Um, a page for the Man Whitney and for the Wilcox and Sign Rank. On those pages are information about uh, these two types of test, but also there are some additional videos, some short um, guides that might be useful. As I said, remember there will be non parametric tests of difference on your summative assessment, so make sure if you have any questions about this that you do ask the module team. Okay, thank you very much, and we'll see you soon.